Oh, look, I've got another one. It's great. I'll, I'll read it to you in just a few minutes. Stand by for uh, another one of uh, our salty text messages. Chad, welcome back. Hasselhorst. Chad hey, Hasselhorst. Thanks for having me. Guys. Good to see you. Yeah. Good to see you guys, too. That, uh, yeah, that yeah, beard yeah. is getting better. Well, it's getting colder out, so you start, start growing. Nice, Keep nice. your face warm. I thought maybe you were growing that uh, until the Blues win a game. Oh, no, it's just so I don't look like a 12-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> you got that face that, Matt, you know, Matt has. Baby that. face. Yes. Yeah, Matt's yeah. got the baby face thing. Well, uh, uh, what's new in your world? Um, you know, just trying to keep up to date on all the new stuff coming out. It's right. <laughs> you know, and to keep it up with the uh, technology stuff, and we, you know, we hear that uh, open every time we have you guys on every Friday afternoon, you know. Technology is sure as a... It, and it really is, man. I mean, every week there's something different that's happening. How do you ferret out what, uh, you know, what is useful information to you and what's not? Oh, well, um, I try, you know, try to read uh, some tech blogs, uh, try to stay up to date on, like, uh, patches coming out for Microsoft, especially anything that really has to do with whoever's hosting my email, like what's going on with Google. Sure. Or, you know, uh, since I use uh, Windows more than Macs, I uh, keep to date what's going on with Microsoft because that's really the platforms that touch my data. And that's how I interact with it. So knowing what's going on with them is very important. Yeah, uh, it's it's like me going shopping at a at a office uh, supply store. I kind of like it, and my wife hates it. You know, reading uh, you know tech blogs sounds like so boring to me. But I like technology. So mm -hmm. let me let me ask you what what is the one thing, the one technological thing that has blown your mind since you've gotten into this business? Um. The more I kind of dig into quantum computing. Ooh, there's the word Are, quantum. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very interesting field where um, yeah. using electrons to store data and uh, through quantum entanglement, it's, it's a very complicated process. I would, If you're interested, I would go look up and do more research. I probably won't give it uh, as good as Jeff would because he's sure. very big into it. But um, the, the amount of power, once we hit quantum computing, all cryptography and all uh, security is pretty much null and void. You can crack any encryption, any passwords. Just oh. through the sheer power of it. Really? And how yeah. long is that going to take for um, us to get to that point? Well, the question, you know, I'm assuming the government will probably get it first, but uh, 20, 20 years maybe, more or less, depending on um, how they uh, how it progresses. Mm -hmm. So 20 years. That's uh, yeah. awfully frightening <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Yep. And then everything we know from cryptography and that point on is broken and nothing is usable then. So everything has to be remade from that point. So then we have to get new everything. Well, yeah, they'll have to be new. At, yeah. So all your data. New then iPhone, become, this new, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> Oh, no. So, yeah. Passwords. You know, I'm gonna, no. you know, one of these things that just it, it kind of flummoxes me. I mean, I love it. I, again, I love the technology, and I'm probably on the as far on the periphery as anybody because I don't know how to use anything. I just think it's cool having it. But, you know, uh, so, yeah, I'm a Mac guy, and, and at home I'm, and now there's the um, Mojave, Mojave update. And, uh, you know, it says you can go into dark mode. And, you know, all of a sudden it's like I'm, I, f I feel like I live on another planet. And I don't know if I want to download the newest, um, you know, software because I don't know how my other software is going to interact with it. Yeah, that's part of when I'm reading up to see how things interact. And usually that's how uh, companies do testing. But there was a big one with Microsoft when they pushed out the new Windows 10 update. I'm not yes. sure if you heard about it. I did. They didn't do testing. Right. And some users got data erased because there wasn't enough hard drive space when they were upgrading. And, and, and they pushed it out because they, you know, it's, it's a very competitive uh, business and they wanted to get it in people's computers. Is that correct? Well, usually uh, the problem with they didn't do testing this time. So they pushed it directly to uh, the consumers instead right. of having a group of testing. Yeah, that's testing. what I'm saying. Yeah. And, and so, uh, you know, and it went out and everybody had massive issues with it. Yeah, so I say update, but make sure you back up before you update. Got it. Okay. Yeah, because many times we see that, you know, with the server, if we run new updates because we got to keep it protected and we got to keep it secure. But when you put those updates on, sometimes it'll break another piece of software. So unfortunately, then you'll have to roll that server back Ugh. to even get it to work. So that's why you have to have the good backups mm -hmm. with your security. Yeah, it's happened to me uh, a handful of times. And I, you know, when you have critical stuff on your computer that you use all the mm -hmm. time, and I, you know, the only critical thing is, uh, you know, financial stuff. Um, but you don't want that wiped out because no. recreating mm -hmm. all, you know, that 48 bucks I have in my account <laughs> for our angry caller. Um, all right, well, uh, we're with Chad Hasselhorst. Uh, I'm sorry, Hasselhoff. Is, he's got the Hoff on his yeah, mind. Yeah, he's got I've the Hoff. i many times, Hasselhoff. <laughs> I'm sure you have. <laughs> sorry about that. So let's talk about data breaches. Data breaches, yeah. Um, okay, mean, wait a minute. 
Oh, I yeah. said data, data, and he said data. Yeah, I think that's so, like potato, potato. I know it is. Yeah. So you you say, I say data, you say data. Well, sometimes I think I say it back and forth. Do you really? Yeah. I'm a data person. Sometimes I do that too. You know, with street names. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I live in St. Louis. Uh, all right, so let's talk about data data breaches. Well, I mean, there's two kinds I like to call for different types of data breaches. Ones where someone actually breaks in and steals data. And then data breaches where you're just kind of careless and you start giving away personal information about yourself. Okay. So like uh, with your MySpace or your Facebook, all of the data you have on there that you you link in a third-party app, like when they had um, with the breach where they were giving out all of that to uh, Cambridge Analytica. Yes, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that was a data breach, but nobody knew that they were participating of in course. giving someone their data. Away. Right, yeah. We were all subjected to that. Mm -hmm. I still don't know if Cambridge Analytica has my stuff. Because did a lot of that come from those within Facebook that were playing games? Yeah, they opted into the app, and then okay. once you give that app control to your account, they were then able to take all of that data, and then they start the correlation between what you, well, who you know, what you're interested in, and then they try to... Uh, do analytics on it to find out the best way to influence people or how to target people. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the key reasons. It's a lot of uh, large data. Wait a second, mm -hmm. Chad, does that mean we're going to have to start reading all of those things before we check accept? I don't know if you should read all of them, but you should really... <laughs> well, I like that. Honestly, I don't I, know. I, but read them all. all. I would recommend it, but obviously people aren't. But I would really go and look at the yeah. settings on how you have uh, your data available. Like in Facebook, there's an option to turn off it being searchable through Google, which most people probably don't look at. You go through your notification settings, your settings on what people can view. Um, really take time and look at that. And also make sure you have security uh, in place, like two-factor authentication. Yeah. So when you log into a website, it asks you for your password. And once you hit your password, um, usually people will do it with their phone. So you they, they phone send a, a code. And they'll send you a code. Mm -hmm. So that way, even if you lose your password, you can then um, you won't be, have to worry about anybody getting into your account because they still have to get your phone. And if they get your phone and your password, you're probably in a lot worse water at that point. Mm -hmm. but. So these big um, breaches mm -hmm. that happen, how frequent are those? Uh, I, I mean, would think they happen all the time. Well, the large ones don't happen. Uh, you'll hear about the large ones. But, I sure. mean, there's smaller ones that happen, um, more personal stuff, like the phishing attacks you get, oh, yeah. where your email gets compromised, and then that just falls down a chain through everybody maybe in a company. Because if you'll get one email, and if someone in the company replies, you guys are all targets now. And so they will focus on you and try to get your data and target you more and more to get that data. And so if, if you think that you have um, been breached somehow, or let's say you're, let's just say you're, you're getting rid of an old computer uh -huh. and um, what, what do they call it? Uh, is like a, 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 gov drive? a government wipe? No, not oh. the, on the, on the hard drive. A DOD wipe. Then. DOD wipe. Yeah. Yes. It's, right. I think it's seven to 15 passes they go over it, but still the best way, just take your hard drive out and take a hammer to it. That's the easiest way to make sure no one's going to get your data. That's a stress reliever, too. What about too? those pictures? Oh, are we on the air? Oh. Okay, we're on. That's, okay. Where you, that's where you have your backup of those pictures. <laughs> I got it right, exactly. Um, so, yeah, uh, I did this on my computer. I um, uh, switched out my old hard drive uh -huh. for an SSD, for a, a solid-state drive, which is fantastic, I will tell you. Uh, it's lightning fast. Uh, it, you don't even hear it. It's quiet. Um, that is one of the best upgrades you can do for a, any kind of computer to, to make the life long. Oh, my long. gosh, yeah. So somebody did tell me, they said, you know, you've got a, a computer that's like seven years old, mm -hmm. uh, but you can make it like almost a brand new computer if you put in a solid state drive. And I wow. did that, and it's not that difficult to do, to, to be honest with you. No, it's not too bad at all. Um, it's just making sure you get everything copied over right. Right. And then sometimes Windows does have, uh, it'll make you reactivate because when it sees hardware change, it thinks that you've moved that copy to a new machine, and it will have you reactivate it so you're not trying to be in uh, violation of the licenses. Got it. So pretty much, I know when uh, you guys were in before, we were talking about the uh, the copier, and I, I mentioned, and I, I think about this all the time, every time you make a copy of something, it's actually stored in a memory. Yes. Yeah. They've had shows on, I mean, where they, certain courthouses, I'm not around here, but they would sell the old machines from the, uh, the government. Mm -hmm. oh, and boy. if it was from a police department, they had people's ID scanned. There's tons of Social data. Social security numbers, and everything. Yeah, everything is stored in there. And, I mean, they just sell them for cheap or give them away, and no one decides to look up and see what's happened to those hard drives. So uh, on a copier, there's a hard drive. Yeah. And, and as an owner of that, if you extract that, um, and you're selling this copier, that's not a big deal. You can get another hard drive. Yeah, you can get another hard drive. Right. That's no issue. But, but you should know that, that the copier 
has secrets. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the copier has lots of passwords stored because it has to be able to connect to email accounts. Correct. It has to connect to servers. It does a lot more than people think it does. My God. I think about all the copiers I've ever put information <laughs> on, and I don't know. Maybe Trouble is what that is. Shouldn't yeah. be alive today. Uh, anything else uh, we didn't cover today? Um, you know, I would say if you have social media accounts and you don't use them anymore, deactivate them. Change the passwords, you know. Like MySpace. Yeah, if you have a MySpace account, go back there. You can deactivate those. Remove uh -huh. all your data because that will still get harvested by uh, data companies. And then they'll use that or uh, then hackers can use that to try to find out, you know, what street did you grow up on? Mm -hmm. You know, pictures of your old pets. You have your names on there. So the, the security questions mm -hmm. can easily be answered by most of your social media, which is kind of scary. Yeah, that is very scary. Chad, thank you so much for being on the show today. Uh, our system engineer, Chad Hasselhorst. But if you call him Hasselhoff, you can get a free cheeseburger and a, a couple of beers. That's uh, right. Talk to the guy about the cheeseburger. <laughs> so how can people reach you? Um, they can reach us at sumner1.com. Um, uh, you can also find us the phone number. Uh, you don't have to have the phone. Oh, number yeah, I'm sorry. I've got our phone number no, for our no. help desk memorized for all of our customers. It's cool. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. Like call. Phone numbers anymore. You know, nobody remembers phone numbers. But I don't it, I don't know anybody's phone number. At least you didn't get about your personal number, though. Oh, yes. <laughs> People do that sometimes because they're like, oh, wait, I never call myself at work. We oh, almost breached Chad <laughs> with that question. Well, I almost breached our help desk. They were <laughs> inundated with questions. All I'm right. Sure they wouldn't like me for that. Chad Hasselhorst from <laughs> Sumner One. We'll uh, check you guys next week here. Thank you guys. Have a good Thanks. day. The big 550, it's the Guy Phillips Show at 439. All right, and from the Golden Oak Lending Traffic Center, Joe Sunderman. Slow down, Westbound.